In Baltimore, the dangerous and complicated work of removing the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge has begun. Meanwhile, officials say recovering the bodies of the four missing construction workers remains a priority. Here's ABC's Ike Ajachi with the details. Highly trained demolition crews have begun cutting portions of the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge into smaller sections, allowing them to be safely lifted from the Patapsco River. A cargo ship crashing into the bridge in Baltimore Tuesday. A total of six construction workers are presumed to have died. We have released the first $60 million in federal funding to help Maryland get uh, the initial stage, which, which starts, of course, with the wreckage removal demolition, but also the uh, acquisition, uh, the procurement, and the preparations for the new bridge. The scale of the operation is huge. Salvage teams will use gas-powered cutters to separate sections of the steel bridge, while divers will conduct underwater assessments. We have to be smart. We've got to be safe. We have to make sure we're protecting these first responders and these people who are working on it. Uh, and at the same time, we have to move with a measurement of speed because we have got to get this channel open. Three massive cranes from the U.S. Navy are already on site. A fourth expected to arrive this week. One of those cranes capable of lifting a thousand tons. It's not just that you have to remove the wreckage. It's that you have to do it in a way that doesn't cause portions of the bridge that are that are there across the water to shift. Out of the more than 4,000 shipping containers on that car, Cargo ship, the NTSB has determined 56 of them contain hazardous materials. 3,000 feet of boom has been deployed to contain any leaks. And when we say hazmat, we're talking about things like uh, ion batteries and perfumes. The good news is that what we're continuing to see is even the materials that are being collected in the boom do not have any impact on the communities. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Baltimore.